Hello everybody, welcome to Pure Math 030. This is an exercise on reflections in the x and y axis. So in the next step, the next type of transformation that we're looking at in this unit. And this, in this lesson I'm just going to go through the basic information, no questions really with it, just some examples and some definitions. And then the next lesson we'll go into more detail on them. So starting off with reflections in the x-axis, I'm going to begin with a square root graph, y1 is equal to square root x. Now you can put this in your calculator, that's sort of the intention, although you probably know what the graph looks like already. And this is what we're going to get for a graph, classic square root function. Then, if we were to consider y2 is equal to negative square root x, so notice how I put a negative in front of the operation or multiplying by negative 1. And this is what the graph looks like. And although we'll look at both together, you can tell that this graph has been reflected in the x-axis. In other words, reflected over the x-axis, the mirror image, so that it's perfectly symmetric about the x-axis. So here you can see them um, together. And um, a very important concept that I'm going to reinforce as we go through this. If you take a look at the point 4 comma 2 and any point on that original curve, y equals square root x, on the reflected graph, the mirror image of it, that point transformed to 4 comma negative 2. So in other words, the y coordinate got multiplied by negative 1. So 2 became negative 2. Let's take a look at another one. Here we have our reciprocal function, y1 is equal to 1 over x, or 1 divided by x. And this is always the shape we get, those two unique sort of arms or curves in quadrants 1 and 3. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply that function by negative 1, which could be written as negative 1 over x, like that. And I'm going to compare the two graphs. There's the first one, y1 is 1 over x. There's the second one, y2 is equal to negative 1 over x. And if you compare it, you'll see that both arms have been reflected over the x-axis. So it's perfectly symmetric around the x-axis. If you're really on top of this one, you might also note that it's, it could have been viewed as a reflection in the y-axis, but that's coming later. And here's the rule with it. In general, given y equal f at x, so any function, doesn't matter, the two we looked at or any other ones, y equal negative f at x, the negative in front of the function, or negative y equal f at x indicates a reflection in the x-axis. So the second way I wrote it, negative y equal f at x, is a, an acceptable, correct way to write it. And it also suggests a really important idea that you are replacing y with negative y in the equation. And that's how you do determine a reflection in the x-axis. y gets replaced with negative y. Either graphically, which we just saw before, or algebraically, which we'll delve more into soon. And this statement becomes true. All points x, y on the original graph, y equal f and x, become x comma negative y on y equal negative f and x. So the y points change, the x points do not change. Let's take a look at reflections in the y-axis. So we've had good luck with the square root graph. Let's look at it again. y1 is equal to square root x. And now compare this one to y2 is equal to square root negative x. And notice how the negative sign is with the x underneath the radical. In other words, we've replaced x with negative x. So there's the first graph. There's the second graph. And you'll see how this one, instead of opening to the right, is now opening to the left. And it is a reflection in the y-axis. So we've reflected it over or around the y-axis so that it's perfectly symmetric around the y-axis. When we compare ordered pairs, now these ones I have y1 on the right side because it looks better, 4 comma 2, that same point which is on the first one when x is 4, y is 2, 
it will transform to negative 4, 2. So you see what's happening. It's the x coordinate that undergoes the transformation. The y point stays the same. One more. y1 is equal to 2 to the x. So there's your exponential function with a base of 2, very steep curve. And then I want to take a look at y2 is equal to 2 to the negative x. So I have replaced x with negative x. There's the first curve, y1 is equal to 2 to the x. And when we reflect it in the y-axis, it's a mirror image around the y-axis, and you get that curve. If you take a look at the point 1, 2 on the original curve, that point will transform on the second graph to negative 1, 2. In other words, the x is replaced with negative, uh, with negative x. The y-coordinate is unchanged. But you do that with every point, and you will always get that reflection in the y-axis. So here's the statement that sums it all up. In general, given y equal f at x, so we'll gain any function, and we're going to really get general with these ones. We'll be looking at a variety of functions, some you've seen before, some you have not seen before, but they're always going to have this pattern. When you replace the x with negative x, in other words, y equal f at negative x, you get a reflection in the y-axis. So therefore, Every point x, y on the original curve, y equal f at x, will transform to negative x comma y on y equal f at negative x. So all you're doing is replacing x with negative x in the equation. So don't think too hard about it. Just make the replacement. So that's the basic information. The next lesson will take these concepts and start mixing it in with the earlier transformations we looked at and then getting very good at identifying what's going on. Thank you for your time.